we're talking about saving, trying to uh, save the environment and human problems, the human uh, issues that are causing problems with our environment. 47.3 is the cause of the extinction. And I left off yesterday showing this habitat loss is a big cause of extinction. Exotic species, pollution, overexploitation, and disease. And uh, these are just some pictures of some loss of the, the rainforest is one thing that's going very quickly. Another thing that's going quickly are the coral reefs, believe it or not. What's that? 60% of the coral reefs are gone? How'd you know that? Mm. Good. Here's a little video about the uh, rainforest, impact on rainforest. Deforestation. I oh, play the, play the game. Oh, never mind. <laughs> are, are simple to understand um, canaries in the cold mine of much more subtle and scary disasters on the horizon. Seven countries in the world no longer have any intact or original forests. And here in the United States, 95% of our old growth forests are already gone. Ouch. In many cases, the forest will not grow back and that land is then converted to grassland. But in the case of rainforests, we have seen firsthand that when those trees are removed, no, they do not come back. The land becomes extremely dry, and the nutrient cycling that those trees used to do is no longer functioning. What that leads to next, deserts. We've seen them, and we've watched them grow around the world. As we have removed trees from along the edges of very dry areas, that desertification has spread where there used to be forests. In my own part of the world, I keep telling people, let us not cut trees irresponsibly. Let us not destroy, especially, the forested mountains. Because if you destroy the, the forests on these mountains, the rivers will stop growing, and the rains will become irregular and the crops will fail, and you will die of hunger and starvation. Now the problem is, people don't make those linkages. Well over 30% of the soils on the planet have been put into the category of, I think, serious degradation. And the practices of agriculture is eroding that ecological capital that is as much, for all practical purposes, uh, non-renewable resources oil. One of the things we don't see or think about when we look at a tree is what's the volume? How much water can be contained there? It turns out to be 57,000 gallons of water in a 10 to 12 inch flash flood. It can grab that much water, prevent it from running off, captures it in that sponge, cleans it, puts it back in the aquifer. Take that one tree away and you've got a flood, you've got soil erosion, You've lost those 57,000 gallons from the local water supply. And then that water is rushing on downstream, hurting people, hurting communities, ultimately polluting the ocean. We really could tip the ocean into a different state. The health of the ocean as we know it depends on the, the water turning over, of the surface water sinking to the bottom and the bottom water coming up to the top. It's conceivable that we could turn that conveyor belt off by warming of the, the surface of the ocean a little bit too much. And if we do that, we, and with all of our dead zones, we could make the surface, the whole damn surface ocean, stagnant. And that's a, that's a terrifying thought. The last time that happened uh, was the end Permian mass extinction, and more than 95% of all the that's a, that's a little clip from a movie called The Eleventh Hour, which I have up here that you can rent, that was, uh, that was done um, by Leonardo DiCaprio. You ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. He kind of narrates the whole thing. Give a quiz for that? But, uh, yeah, there's a quiz for that if you want to. Um, so, it's something you might want to look into. It's a good movie. 
And uh, this, is, uh, this is pollution now. We pollute the air. A lot of the pollution gets into the water. There's more organisms in the oceans than there are on the land, so uh, pollution hurts all sorts of individuals. And this is a little clip on pollution and how it has hurt the environment. This is an old video. But it's become increasingly evident that the problems they face are getting worse. When you spend a lot of time at sea, it's soon obvious that humans are devastating the oceans with toxic substances. We do this because of our false impression that the oceans are infinite. And that's what this program is about. We ask this fragile ocean to dissolve and absorb and purify and render harmless all that humanity produces. We live in a crowded world in which there are more people alive today than the total of all our ancestors during the entire 100,000 year history of our species. For about 95,000 years, the total number of people alive at any one time was the same as the number of people we add to our present world every two days. Many people seem to feel that the developing nations are the problem. But in the Western world, our consumption of resources is way out of line. In America, for example, we use 25% of the world's resources, even though our population is only 5% of the world's population. That means that as regards energy, America stresses the world more than two Chinas and 15 Indias. This is an old video, and China has surpassed us in energy usage. Mm -hmm. So in that the short amount of time since they made this video, that's must, of course, eventually be thrown away. Cars, planes, houses, telephones, televisions, computers, paper, plastics, tires, even the factories that made these things eventually wear out and get thrown away, leaving behind nothing but the discarded goods they produce and all of the pollutants they discharge. The law is that everything we produce eventually ends up in dumps and everything that ends up in dumps eventually leaches out into the water and from there into the sea. This is the highest point on the east coast of America, south of Maine. It's a mountain of garbage from New York City, 150 feet high, and is already the largest trash pile in the history of the human species. It's located on a small island, surrounded by the sea. I did my uh, senior uh, seminar in college on this little island. What they did was they take, took garbage from New York City. There it is. This is a kind of a distance, this whole thing. They had this little island off of New York City, and they would put garbage. they dig, dig a hole and put garbage in the hole, and then they cover it up with dirt so you don't smell it. And they just kept doing that. They'd pile up garbage, put dirt over it, pile up garbage, put dirt over it. It eventually got 150, 200 feet high. And they had to stop putting garbage on it because it got in the flight path of planes that were going to land at the LaGuardia Airport. <laughs> and it's the largest trash pile in the history of humankind anywhere. And whenever it rains, the rain just goes down through those all that trash and it leaches, it's called leaching. It comes out of the garbage pile, all of these different toxins and leaches out into the water ways that are surrounding this little island and there's no fish there. And they, uh, they estimate that toxins will be leaching out of that trash pile for something like 35,000 years at a level so toxic that nothing can grow. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. Is it a super fun site? Or is there anything you, there's nothing they can do I about it? I don't think there's anything they can do about it so big. Wait, so where does the trash go now? Like, mm -hmm. 
they have to, they have to, they, have to uh, they ship it off. They ship it out. They, they truck it out. And it costs like to get rid of your trash in New York City. Here you have to pay a hundred dollars a year. There it's like a thousand dollars a year. Wow. So it's just more expensive. That's right, like they have barges that weren't allowed to dock anywhere, so they just drifted around the East Coast looking for a place That's to right. dump their garbage. They, they take a, uh, most of it to Canada now. So, pollution is a, is a bad problem. Now, this is an exotic species, invasive species. That's kudzu taking over that house. It grew like that over that house in one day. I made that up. I always think that's a funny joke. <laughs> No, but it can overgrow a, uh, an area quickly, and there's not native insects and such to hold it back, so uh, there are problems with the kudzu. And this is, uh, uh, what is this, a mongoose? Mm -hmm. That uh, they uh, released in Hawaii by accident, and it's killing all the Hawaiian birds. And so when a, when a, when a non-native species, uh, exotic species comes into a new area, often it doesn't have natural predators and they thrive very quickly. Uh, you may have heard about the pythons in the Everglades, have you heard uh, yeah. about that? They have bounties on them now. Yeah, somebody, some people, you know, had a python somewhere, you know, they maybe were keeping as a pet or something like that and, and they got rid of it, they threw it in the Everglades and now they're all over the place and they get huge and they're killing all the alligators and things. Um, they're becoming quite a pest. Hmm. This is a chart of uh, global warming. Uh, global warming is due to carbon dioxide. Anytime you burn anything, it produce, pushes carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Hmm. Now plants like carbon dioxide because they use it for photosynthesis. But we're putting in the, it into the air way faster than the plants can take it out of the air. And we're actually cutting down plants at the same time and burning them, which does just the opposite. <laughs> it takes the carbon that was in the plant's body and puts it back in the air as CO2. And when we do this, the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker. A thicker atmosphere holds more heat, which makes the air warmer. It's warmer now than it was just 10 years ago and 50 years ago and 100 years ago. It gets a little warmer every year. That's global warming. <laughs> Scientists used to argue back and forth that is it really happening? It seems like it's happening. Is it true? And most of the re all of the research has supported it. They haven't found any evidence that it's not happening. And here it shows the, the chart of increase and um, there's a, a famous movie called An Inconvenient Truth that Al Gore made about it, you've probably heard of. Um, that's one of the things we're gonna watch after the AP exam. Here it shows coral reefs that are bleached. They're all white and dead because of global warming. And you wonder, how does that happen? It's actually because of the acidity of seawater. The carbon, extra carbon dioxide that's in the air reacts with the seawater. Are you getting this, Jonathan? And forms a, a weak carbonic acid. Mm -hmm. And the whole ocean becomes slightly more acidic because of that extra carbon dioxide. And that acidity kills the, coal, the, kill, kills the coral. And the coral are dying out quickly. And of course, the coral are the base of the food chain in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons there's a lot less fish now than there used to be is because you helping to, we're destroying those coral reefs. And who, who did, who'd have thought it, that releasing, burning fossil fuels would destroy coral? But it turns out that's what's happening. And I don't think it's anybody's fault directly. It's just something we didn't realize was going to be such a problem. And, and now we got to do something about it. Um, there's a, a problem with over-exploitation. There's an extra reading section on page 917 that talks about the uh, exploitation of Asian turtles. People grab these turtles and sell them as pets or as, to make turtle soup. And turtles are very slow in reproducing, so there's a big problem with that. And of course, there are problems with over-hunting and over-fishing. They got these big nets that can catch millions of fish at a time. 
the technology is so great that we don't really give the fish time to reproduce and come back. We can kill them faster than they can, than they can uh, replenish their numbers. So that's a big problem because a lot of the a lot of people eat fish in the world. If you take fish off the menu, you've got problems. The bottom is a picture of the of an area after you drag a net through it. There's really nothing left. I don't know what that thing is. But they drag a net on the bottom of the ocean and basically taking everything with them. Mm -hmm. Drag net fishing is what they call it. Whoops. The book talks a bit about keystone predators. Predators at the top of the food chain, like these grizzly bears, which when you eliminate a keystone predator, that, uh, that changes the entire environment because they're the top of the food chain. So if you eliminate them, whatever they eat is going to increase in number. And then whatever those things eat is going to decrease in number, possibly, because there's more of those things. And you just, you just set off the whole balance of everything. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they talk a bit about old growth forests. Have you ever heard of the northern spotted owl? It's a species that helps save some of the old growth forests because northern spotted owls can only live in these old growth forests. And um, some, some ecologists realized that, and so there's a law in the books that says if you cut down a forest and it will drive a species to extinction, you aren't allowed to cut that forest. And by finding out that the northern spotted owl cannot live anywhere else except these old growth forests, these environmentalists were able to save the, the last of the old growth forests that were left in the, in the country, which are mostly in North, Northern California and Oregon. It's the only place left there's forest that's really old. Everywhere else has been cut. All the forests everywhere. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Can you imagine all that land? I mean, all the forests on St. Simon, they all were cut at one point. They came through, cut them all, and Everything you see has grown back since. Yeah. Old growth forests are very rare. So we should be a forest right here at the school? This would have been, yeah, if there yeah. weren't any people. Yeah. 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 But even going back, uh, St. Simon's was all cut uh, during the before the plantation era. They cut they cut down trees. They t they took the wood, they shipped them to Epworth, they shipped the trees off. All the St. Simon's was cut for trees. Some of it ended in the USS Constitution. That's right. The old ship, Making yeah. The ship, yeah. This little true. Uh, picture talks about what's called the edge yeah. effect. If you take a large patch of habitat, let's say this is a bunch of forest here. What part of that forest is edge? Well, this part is edge. So this is a large forest, and most of it is forest. There's not nearly as much edge. 30% of it is edge, 70% of it is forest. But when those patches start to get small, most of this little forest is edge. Hi everyone, all the National Honor Society members that are helping with Relay for Life tonight, please meet Ms. Bradford in the Relay for Life parking lot at 5.30 today. And also Carter Walker and me, please go see Nurse Fires. Thank you. Boy. Okay, so this is a small forest and you can see it's mostly edge. Well, different types of species live on the edge and live in the middle. Living so if you start edge. to make forests small and make them patchy, which is what we're doing when we put roads and cities, we're breaking these large forests up into smaller patches, you see. And a small patch is mostly edge, so we're really changing the, the way the forest is. And it, it helps the creatures that do well on the edge, <coughs> but it hurts the creatures that do well in the middle. Living life on the edge. That's right. It's <laughs> tough for some organisms. So what are you going to do about all this? Well, that's what the last section is over. I want you to read it. I don't have much time to talk about it. But you can guess what it is. What are you going to do to save all these organisms? Stop cutting down trees. Stop cutting down the forest so much. Preserve habitat preservation. Nature preserves, national parks. These are bits of land that are put aside, and we say no matter, we're going to guard these things. We're not going to let, we're going to put people on there that guard the forest. We're not going to let anybody cut these trees or hunt there. And that's what you have to do. You have to preserve. 
this is an area in uh, Illinois that they're uh, actually rebuilding. Uh, they made it a wildlife refuge. They're rebuilding it. Uh, read about it on page 921. The Imaquan floodplain restoration. There's a lot of projects to go restore areas. Um, they're doing a marsh restoration right here on the circle. Do y'all know about that? No. They're restoring, they're trying to restore this area around the big circle there, you know, in the middle where it looks like it's all kind of dead. They're going to restore that to the original the marsh that, that, that it was. The tides, aren't they? What's that? The letting the seawater come in. Let, letting the seawater come in, that'll bring little seeds of marsh plants. The marsh uh, yeah. plants will grow there, that'll be marsh eventually. That is a marsh restoration project. And the more, it'll take years, 20, 30 years probably. Mm -hmm. But the more of that you can do, in nature, the better, and it just takes it takes commitment, it takes money, it takes knowledge. Mm -hmm. But if you lose your biodiversity, you have bigger problems. So we have to be smart enough to be able to save <coughs> uh, what we can. Well, what's the point of having the marsh in that circle if it's not connected to the ocean? Well, it will be. There, there'll be water coming underneath the river. Oh, yeah, the yeah. yeah. That's how they can get the marsh there. You can't have the marsh there without. So, and that's what it used to be before they put the roads in in the first place. What happened was they put the roads in and cut off the marsh and the whole place kind of died. And now they put communication with the, with the ocean so the water can get back in and it'll gradually turn back to marsh. And they're also going to plant some marsh grasses and such. Oh. Maybe you come back in 20 years, Sarah, it'll be a marsh. Okay. And then you don't have to throw things because you're angry about nature being marsh. Okay. I'm so sad about that. Time to go.